Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments, and ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey, racing fans, welcome back to another edition of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap. Spring is in the air, and what that means is the Kentucky Derby is just a little bit over a month away. Things really heat up this Saturday as we have the biggest prep to date and perhaps the biggest race in the United States thus far in 2016. The $1 million Florida Derby has not only attracted Fountain of Youth winner Mohamed, who remains undefeated for trainer Kieran McLaughlin, but also the two-year-old champion from the West Coast, the undefeated son of Uncle Mo, Nyquist, who will come east early, getting the extra week of rest before the Kentucky Derby, and of course that $1 million bonus that the Phasic Tipton sale offers up to two-year-old graduates if they win the Florida Derby. This is a very interesting situation as it does not happen often. In fact, I can't really recall a situation where you had the undefeated West Coast horse and the undefeated East Coast horse meeting before the Kentucky Derby. But that was what we will have on Saturday afternoon. It's been a, quite a start to the career for Nyquist. Hasn't gotten the respect that many with his equal resume might have gotten in the past, but he sure has found a way to hit the wire first in all six starts. It's not surprising looking back that in his debut, he overcame the rail draw, battled all the way around the track, and held off the odds on favorite to win his first race in June at Santa Anita Park of 2015. Then the Redham and O'Neill sent him right to the Stakes Company where he took on the best Southern California horses that he could and the best pal Stakes and then the Del Mar Futurity. Both races he showed he could rate from off the pace and he handled those fields with relative ease, including a victory at 1-2 to two in the Del Mar Futurity. I remember seeing him in the paddock that day and he just was the epitome of class and just towered over the field in terms of maturity and in terms of looks. Then the doubters started to creep in as he returned to San Anita Park for the front runner stakes. And while the heavy favorite did hold on for the win, he did not do so in a visually impressive fashion. In fact, it looked like Swipe was going by up the rail, but Nyquist just turned him away. At that point, it seemed like there were more naysayers for Nyquist than there were those proponents of him moving forward and winning big races ahead. But he did not let that bother him. Him and his connections went to Keeneland. And despite being supported kind of lukewarm a bit for an undefeated horse with his resume, he went off at slightly below 5-1, to one, was in the mid-pack throughout much of the race, and then pulled away and held off his old friend Swipe in the final strides to score and make himself the two-year-old champion and, of course, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Champion at Keeneland last October. From there... During the offseason, most of Derby future betters sided with other horses and made Nyquist a bit of an uh, outsider due to perhaps his lack of speed figures and lack of pedigree to get the mile and a quarter distance in the annual run for the Roses. But he came back in the San Vicente and showed off his talent and his class when he was able to put away Exaggerator in what was a very fast race at seven furlongs. He now heads the Gulf Stream, and once again, he will not be the favorite in this spot. Mo Heyman certainly will be, and is deservingly so. But don't be surprised whether even Nyquist wins or loses this race if he turns around and finds a way to beat Mo Heyman in the Derby. I definitely think it's going to be a tough task to go on Mo Heyman's home turf when it appears that he's set for a career best effort based on sheets and things of that nature. But don't discount Nyquist as he has found a way to hit the wire first in all six starts and is certainly much classier than many of his naysayers gave him credit for in the past. So we really do look forward to Saturday's race. We're also looking forward to bringing you more coverage of the three-year-olds leading up to the Kentucky Derby. Good luck. Tough race to bet on on Saturday in the Florida Derby, the 14th race on a 14-race card. But it should be quite a spectacle as we have the two undefeated Colts taking each other on in South Florida. Next weekend, we'll talk about the Santa Anita Derby, the big prep out here for the Kentucky Derby. Good luck. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. 